Hi, Blue Marble Riders. I don't know about you, but watching the fanfare of yet another iteration of the BMW GS1300 adventure left me scratching my head. I mean, BMW obviously knows something I don't about making bikes. They've been very successful uh, with their 1200 twins, their adventure bikes. While most moto journals were lavishing gobs of praise on those things, I couldn't help thinking, large ADV bikes, what's the purpose of them? I mean, while there have always been smaller choices for the ADV market, they've tended to be marginalized by motorcycle media that sort of thinks of them as less glamorous. Instead, they seem to be intent on promoting these larger, uh, more glamorous, large capacity, powerful, expensive ADV choices. So less sexy, but perhaps more fit for purpose bikes like the AJP PR7 or the Kawasaki KLR650, the KTM 690 or his brother, the um, Husqvarna 701, are usually ignored and underreported on by the mainstream media who tend to wax lyrical on things like, you know, the KTM 1190, 1290, on uh, the Super Adventure R they've got, the Vstrom 1050DE, the latest from Suzuki, um, and of course, this brand new BMW 1300, among many others. But it appears to be that if you want to get some traction in the media, you have to be big, big capacity, big bike, big in expense. I guess it attracts our attention. But for me, in this podcast, I'm going to ask, are large capacity ADV bikes actually fit for purpose? And if so, what purpose? What should you be using them for? So today's podcast is my take on what large capacity ADV bikes are good at and what, in my opinion, an average rider shouldn't expect them to do. But first, what is an ADV bike? Well, let's go to the experts. Cycle World's definition is ADV bikes, also known as adventure motorcycles, are larger displacement multi-cylinder motorcycles developed for on and off-road travel and are capable of covering great distances while providing the rider with relative comfort. And for most of that, I agree with it. Shows like The Long Way Round were a catalyst for the ADV genre. I don't know about you, but I feel shows like this oversold the capability of large capacity ADV bikes. I feel many unsuspecting riders were lured into the erroneous idea that they could take their large capacity ADV bike anywhere. BMW certainly benefited from what Ewan and Charlie's well-supported and documented circumnavigation of this planet did for them. And since then, and you can hardly blame them, every major moto brand has jumped on the large ADV bandwagon and is producing their equivalent of the large capacity go anywhere ADV dream. But I can't help feeling that this go anywhere dream has for some perhaps trap them into an expensive nightmare. But first, I don't want to give the wrong impression. I love large capacity ADV bikes. In fact, I own one. Large capacity ADV bikes are fabulous and have pulled many riders off the single focus, uh, sometimes back-breaking sport tours into ext onto extremely comfortable, well-mannered workhorses, mile munchers with incredible capacity to carry two or more people and all their camping paraphernalia, as I've done many times before, in uh, reliable comfort. I mean, luxurious comfort, further than most other bikes out there can do. I've done several 800 km days, two up, full bags, with nary an ache by the end of it. I don't think I could have done that on a sport tour, hunched over. Uh, it may have been a little more fun at the beginning, but by the end, I'm pretty sure that I would be happier on an ADV bike. That is something they do really, really well. They probably wiped out the sport tour for a period of time. There weren't many left around. They're roomy. The suspension is phenomenally comfortable. And despite the 19 or even 21 inch front wheel, they're well balanced and nimble. You can get around that with geometry. Why, even the looks have grown on me. The, the old Vstrom I've got looks to me like a lovely bike. I love it. When I first got it, it wasn't so good. And I have no problem with them being kitted out with all the off-road luggage, GPS system, bark busters, rad guards, crash bars, dot off-road tires, you know, disc guards, and parking them out in front of Starbucks. I have no problem with that. 
A lot of people like to do that. They like to look the part, but perhaps sensibly, never really take them off onto really nasty trails. There's a place for them. But for me, riding one on anything but really well-groomed, modestly graded fire roads is a potential death trap where I live, particularly if you ride alone and or it's muddy. As some of you know, I ride solo off-road quite a bit, which is a risk. But the bike I use is an enduro bike. It's light, it's very well suspended, and it has 100% dirt-focused tires. It has a much higher ground clearance than most than all ADV bikes, and a much better turning circle. In short, it's much more manageable and safer for me, solo. And for those reasons, it's much easier to ride, and for me at least, that equates to more fun. And there are reasons for that. I mean, I could take my V-Strom off and not have an enduro bike. I could do that, it'd be, certainly be cheaper, but would I? Not a chance. Here's why. There are many reasons I wouldn't do it, but here are some of the big ones, especially around here, but I'm betting this is also applicable nearly everywhere off-road. First of all, the road surface or the surface I'm riding on and the tires. Where I ride on Vancouver Island, many of the roads, the trails and the tracks are made with rock crush. Rock crush is this blast rock and it's sharp some of it can be big some of it can be small all of it is nasty one to fall on and two very damaging to tires the tires i use are full tough off-road knoblies which would be a liability on a wet tarmac road but eat dirt duff and rock for lunch the bike is light so punctures are really unlikely as is rim damage it helps that I fitted a tubeless system so I can air them down to two or three PSI for improved traction without fear of a puncture. And that's huge. The traction I can get off these things is amazing and I don't have to worry about a puncture. If I were to do that on my 500 pound to 600 pound ADV bike, maybe even more weight than that with all the gear on it, I would definitely damage a rim and tear the tire. It's not an option for me on my V-Strom. So if I don't do it, I'm seriously down on traction. That's a bad thing on these road surfaces, especially if they're wet. Then let's go into more detail. There's the substrate. What is that? Well, that's not only the material that you're riding on, but it's the fact that you're riding on a substrate, that material, which is moving around underneath you. Around here, much of the substrate moves when you ride on it, particularly if you're riding up a steep incline. If I stop on a steep hill in gravel or loose crush, by dint of my bike's relatively light weight, it's about 245 pounds, better tires and superior traction, I can start up that hill no problem without digging myself into a hole. It will literally go, okay? And uh, you know I don't have to maneuver my bike down that hill because I can't make it up and try again. I'm an average enduro bike rider, nothing special. I simply don't think I have the skill or the strength to do what I do on my enduro bike on a 600 pound bagged large capacity ADV bike. In fact, I know I couldn't do it. Not only that, if I could do it once, maybe that'd be okay. But if I come off again, I am I'm too exhausted to be able to get that thing up and maneuver it around. I can't imagine on a steep grade, one, picking the bike up, two, hoping it doesn't slide, and three, trying to maneuver it backwards and forwards and getting it down that grade. It would be super tough. It might be best to slide it down. But that bike cost me a ton of money, especially if it's a BMW you know, RGS 1300 adventure. I don't know if I want to do that to that bike. Around here, also the next thing is there are so many dead ends. It's great to explore. You'll go off on a logging road. You may go up the side of a mountain and hit tons of spurs, they're called. Okay, many trials, many of those spurs simply just end. Their dead ends and may end on a very, very steep grade, quite surprisingly suddenly, with rock crush and they'll be narrow. I have to turn the bike around. I can either use my side stand to pivot this 240 pound enduro bike. I can power turn it by leaning it over and hitting the throttle and watching it whip round with me. Or I can just do a quick three point turn. It's dead simple on this bike. And my turning circle on that bike is much smaller than that of a big ADV bike. Um, I, can, I don't even have to get off it. I can just paddle it backwards and forwards if I want, no problem. 
Here's another reason a big ADV bike is not appropriate where I live and probably not on serious trails where you live too. Uh, there are plenty of obstacles out there. You're in a forest or you're just in an open area. Obstacles, drainage ditches, what are called whoops, which are these very steep up and down ditches, if you like, and just plain old twisty single tracks. Very small tracks, they're very twisty. I can't imagine taking my V-Strom on those. There's not a chance, not even with great tires on. And don't forget, the V-Strom is the lightest Lita Plus ADV bike out there. Not the 1050, perhaps that may actually be, but mine is barely 500 pounds and I couldn't imagine taking it. Around here, logging companies want to keep me and many riders out. Many private companies decommission old logging roads by blocking them with gates, rocks, logs, or by digging large ditches. Often there's a workaround, but this may well be a really rough and ready trail. Um, rocks strewn all over it, heavily bouldered, maybe even a wet creek bed. Um, it'll be rooty, it'll have steep inclines, almost like steps on it, okay? And you may have to go over logs or through um, meter plus water-filled whoops, these drainage, or not drainage ditches, but barrier ditches that they dig with uh, backhoes to keep you out. It all comes down to traction and weight. None of these would I like to try on a large, heavy, undertired and marginally ground clearance ADV bike. Like I said, it comes down to traction and weight. You won't have any traction, enough ground clearance or balance possibly. It's possible you'll drop the bike, struggle to pick it up and try to turn it round and get out. It would be absolutely exhausting, I imagine. And quite possibly around here, life-threatening. Dropping your bike, is a 600 pound point load on an engine casing or a cylinder head or your boot. Um, and that could be a catastrophe for both you and your bike's health. I mean, you might survive it, but if you've got oil gushing up the top of your cylinder head, you could be in big trouble. The beam of cylinder heads stick out. Yes, you can get engine guards. Um, no guarantee they're not gonna punch through the loose gravel on top and, and there's not a nasty piece of rock crush sticking up just to bust straight in through the top of your cylinder head. No guarantee at all. So for all those reasons and potentially more, uh, I would love to hear your reasons. I would not even consider taking a large ADV bike off-road, not around here and not anywhere I'm not familiar with. But in their defense, my feelings on big bore ADV bikes is that they have their place for sure, but they're just too heavy and in many cases too unwieldy without enough ground clearance to be practical in marginal conditions. It's about weight, it's about suspension. A better solution may be the 370 pound AJP PR7 or a KTM 690R or an Aprilia 660 Touareg or one of the many T7s that are out there now. For me, they'd be better options than Lita Plus ADV bikes. It just makes so much more sense. Weight is king. In fact, if you hold on, I have a sneaky suspicion that we'll be ending up with some very good 500cc, 450cc ADV bikes. Yes, you'll pay for it on the tarmac. They're not gonna be as comfortable as uh, one of those big Beamers or a V-Strom or any of those big bikes. But if you have serious intentions of taking those off-road, me, I feel like that's a mistake. Uh, unless you're going to stick to very, very well-groomed roads, in which case they probably work a treat. But if you want to really go exploring and do some adventuring and do the things that you and Charlie did, that was the wrong bike. They should have gone on lighter bikes. I know all the backstory behind it and why they ended up with those ones, but they had a humongous support crew, tons of spares, and could take days off because they were exhausted on those big bikes. But what about where you live and ride? Perhaps the large bore ADV bike works well for you in your area. And it's a question of taking some training, riding in groups and knowing your limits. Am I wrong? What do you think? Leave your comments below and don't forget, subscribe, and give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and it's just a click or two. You might even wanna click on the bell and be reminded whenever I put a video out. Thanks for watching, stay safe, have a great day. Once again, thanks for watching everyone. If this is the first time you've watched, please consider subscribing. I do product reviews, motorcycle reviews, off-road and on-road vlogs, as well as tours. Don't forget to follow me on social media, that's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, and to like.
and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. This is the Blue Marble Rider, out.